Howdy folks, and welcome to another Unblock Me video. Today we are going to be covering Mongoose. What is Mongoose? Mongoose is an object relational mapping or ORM system for MongoDB. It's similar to how SQLize is used for MySQL. Mongoose, as its main thing, provides a schema-based model system for MongoDB. You might be wondering, why would we want to put a schema system on Mongo? Isn't one of the whole points of Mongo that it's schema-less? Well, let's take a look at an example. So in this example, we have three rows. One of them, the username is Bob, the age is 24. The second one, the username is Jenny, and the age is 85. The third one, the username is Ash, and then Ash seems to have put their email into the age field. We apparently didn't have anything on our front end verifying that, and we didn't have anything on our back end checking that, and so now we've got bad data in our database. Mongo doesn't care. Mongo says, yeah, sure, that can be a string, whatever. Mongoose fixes this by putting a schema. Schemas keep our data nice and tidy so we can make assumptions about it. So for example, we can assume that age is a number because we know we have a schema that enforces that. Unlike SQL schemas though, Mongoose schemas are defined in the code, not in the database, so they're actually really quick to change if you want to change them, whereas SQL schemas take quite a bit more work. So that's why we want to use schemas. Let's get started. So to get us started, I've built out a little express server here. You can see it's getting the port, it's pulling in some user routes, and it's using express. We've got our API user that goes to our user routes. Let's take a look at those really quick. We have three routes here. We have our post route, which takes in a username, password, and email, and then doesn't do anything. We've got our user route that takes an ID and doesn't do anything. And then we've got our user route that doesn't take in anything and also doesn't do anything. They're not very useful routes right now, but we are going to add in mongoose calls to make them do something. The first thing we need to do is we need to actually install Mongoose. So I'm going to open up my terminal and you can see I'm already in my directory that I want to be in. So from here, I'm going to run npm install Mongoose. And Mongoose, you might notice I'm not installing Mongo. That's because Mongoose includes Mongo because it knows it needs Mongo. Mongoose only connects to one database. This is unlike SQLize where we had to also install MySQL 2. That's because SQLize can connect to multiple databases and so it's not going to assume for you which one you're connecting to. Mongoose on the other hand only connects to Mongo. I'm going to let this uh, pause a little bit while this goes and does its work. And we're back. Sometimes NPM takes a little while. So now that we have that installed, let's just check our package JSON. We can see Mongoose in there. Let's connect to it. So I'm going to make a directory called config. And then inside there, I'm going to make a file called connection.js. This is going to contain the connection code. So the first thing we need to do is import mongoose. I'm actually going to make that a little bit bigger because that's kind of small. There we go. Once we've imported mongoose, we want our connection string. This is similar to Mongo. Our connection string is going to start with the protocol mongodb colon two slashes the IP address, which is currently our local server. So 127.0.0.1 uh, colon 27017, I believe that's the, the port, and then a slash, and then our database name. We don't want this to be hard coded for a number of reasons. One, because it's just dangerous to hard code st um, connection strings like this. The other, because if I push this code to Heroku, Heroku is going to have its own MongoDB string, and I don't want to use this one because I don't want it to be hard coded and connect to the wrong place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it. I've already set up a .env here, and you can see I've already put MongoDB URL inside that .env, which means now I can actually get this connection string, connection string, by accessing process.env. So process.env.mongodb.url. 
think that's the right one. Yep, MongoDB URL. So now that's a protected string. I'm not going to check in the .env into my repository. So if I have a local password set, I'm not going to spam that. And it also means that if I push to Heroku, it's going to use whatever local environment variable. So it's just a little bit more dynamic. It's a little nicer. So next thing we're going to call um, mongoose.connect. The first thing is the connection string. The second is going to be a list of options. These are basically the same options that you do for a Mongo connection. So use new URL parser and use unified topology. I'm not going to go into detail of what those do right now, but these are kind of the standards that we use. Mongoose.connect does not actually return anything. Instead, it sets up a variable called mongoose.connection. This variable is the actual connection that we're going to export. Exports equals. So what do we have here now? We've pulled in mongoose. We've got our connection string out of the environment variables. We've told mongoose to connect to that string. And then we're actually exporting mongoose.connection to be used other places in our application. The first place we want it to be used is here in our app. We want to handle and only start our app up when Mongoose has connected. Why do we want to do that? Well, imagine if you started your listen and then waited for your database to connect. It might take a couple seconds for your database to start connecting. If someone connects to one of your APIs before that happens, they're going to get an error because your database isn't ready. So what we want to do is we want to wait for the database to be ready, then tell Express it can start up. First thing we're going to do is we're going to import our connection from config slash connection. And then for Mongoose, it doesn't use like a callback or a promise or anything like that. It uses an event driven architecture, which means that it will fire an event when the connection is actually open. That's going to be connection dot once open and then a callback. Why? What is this once? Once is a type of function in event driven architectures where it only lets the event fire one time. So basically once we get this single open event, it's just going to forget about this callback and it's never going to call it again. That's perfectly fine for us because we don't want our express server to be listening multiple times. We only want it to happen the very first time. If multiple once events are fired, we're not too worried about it. Or we may be worried about it, but that's not a problem for this code. So I'm going to take my app dot listen. I'm going to cut that code and I'm going to paste it inside connection dot once. The reason I'm going to do that is because I don't want my express app to start until the mongoose server connection is made. So let's try that out. Node index.js. Okay, server listening on port 3001. You might have noticed that took a little bit longer. And that was because we're connecting to the Mongo server. Cool. Now we have our server listening. Well, let's, if we hit one of these routes, it's still not going to work very well. The next thing we need is we need models. Just like SQLize and its schemas, Mongoose also has schemas, and that's how we determine what the data looks like. So I'm actually going to create now a models directory, and inside that I'm going to create the user model. I say user model because that's pretty much the only data we have right now. So first thing, we're going to import mongoose. Fire mongoose. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to create a schema. Bear in mind, schemas are not the same as models. Whereas in SQLize, we had schemas that were pretty much tied directly to a table. Mongoose doesn't have that because Mongo has sub documents and also a model can be made up of multiple schemas. So we're going to define our schema first. This is our user schema equals new mongoose.schema. 
we give it a definition. So this is an object where the key is going to be the actual schema field. So I could say username and that would define a username field. The type, you can have a complicated object here or you could just give it a type. Also unlike SQLize, in Mongoose the types are just JavaScript types. So I can just say string. Um, let's say I want a password. String. Oops. String. There's our schema. Pretty simple. If at some point we'll get into sub documents and how to handle multiple schemas, but for now this should suffice. Now we're going to create our model. Again, remember in Mongoose those are separate concepts. So we're going to say user model equals mongoose.model, which I think it's a lowercase model, and then we're going to give it the name user and our schema. And then that's what we export. User model. So now we've defined a schema with our fields. We've created a model from that schema. No, this is actually going to be the collection ID for that. And then we've exported it. Cool. So in this video, we went over how to connect Mongoose to a MongoDB instance, as well as how to integrate it with Express. We also went over how to create a very simple schema and model. In the next video, we will go over how to do creation of data and fetching data using Mongoose. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.